Hey guys, it's John from Wrestling Talking the Shop, and welcome back to the channel. We're going to do today in wrestling history for July the 11th. On this day in 1961, Gene Kanitsky defeated Vern Gagne in Minneapolis, Minnesota to win the AWA World Heavyweight Champion. On this day in 1987, Lex Luger won the NWA US Champion for the first time with a win over Nikita Koloff in Greensboro, North Carolina. On this day in 1989, Stan Hansen defeated Tenru. Oh, Stan Hansen and Ten Tenru defeated Jumbo Saruda and Yoshi Tatsu, Yosh Yatsu. I'm sure I batched those names, but <laughs> to claim the All uh, Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions in a match in Japan. On this day in 1999, WCW Bash at the Beach took place at the National Car Rental Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The main event saw the WCW World Heavyweight Champion up for grabs in a tag team match, pit pitting the uh, Kevin Nash and Sting against Randy Savage and Sid or Randy Savage and Sid Vicious. Uh, Savage, Savage and Vicious were uh, won the bout as the Macho Man made the winning pinfall and declared the new champion despite his title change. The event is perhaps best remembered for the Junkyard Invitational match. This bout saw a number of wrestlers take place in a free-for-all in a real junkyard under hardcore rules with the winner being the first to escape the junkyard and awarded the trophy. The match was filmed in advance with poor lighting and the match and this made the action almost impossible to follow. Fit Finley won the match. What year was that? 19, oh, 19, 1999 WCW. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. The world title in a tag team match. Crazy. Anyway, on this day in 2004, in the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, played host to WWE Vengeance on pay-per-view. The event saw Chris Benoit successfully defend the World Heavyweight Champion against Triple H. Earlier on the card, Edge defeated Randy Orton to take away the WWE Intercontinental Champion. On this day in 2005, in one of the most memorable Raw segments of the period, the recently released Matt Hardy made a surprise return to Raw and attacked Edge. Hardy had been released just after WrestleMania and emerged while he was uh, off the road uh, basically, Edge and, Lena, Edge and Lita had an affair, and then they released Hardy and the fans. Basically, I mean, he went to ROH, and then he like remember he come back. Remember that Lindsay? Mm -hmm. You remember that whole thing? And then he ended up coming back, and it was just it was just a whole crazy deal. I mean, but that's that happened on this day in uh, 2009. Former WWE Champion Brock Lesnar headlined UFC's landmark UFC 100 pay per view in Las Vegas, Nevada. He faced off with Frank Mir to unify the interim and regular versions of the UFC heavyweight champion. Lesnar won via TKO in the second round. The event secured a 1.6 million buys on pay-per-view, breaking UFC's record at the time and retaining one of the biggest pay-per-views to this day. On this day in 2011, at a taping of Impact Wrestling at the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida, Sting defeated Mr. Anderson to win his fourth and final TNA World Heavyweight Champion. On this day in 2013, WWE opened its much, uh, much the day opened the WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. The center has been used as a venue for the training, polishing superstars, and even used as an event venue during COVID-19. And they, it's played host to WrestleMania 36 and all other, sorts of other events. On this day in uh, 2013, one of the first bouts of the truly NXT brand on the map saw Antonio Cesaro defeat Sami Zayn in a two out of three falls match on NXT weekly TV show that was taped on this date. And that's going to wrap up today in wrestling history, guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.